Last question. Um, would you send a message to young people, like say, people of uh, 30, 30, 35 years of age, uh, working in business field, with uh, some good aspiration, ambitions, what would be your advice to these people? Well, my advice is always uh, think of yourself as a leader. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I tell people when they join KPMG that if you have anyone who looks to you over the course of the day for guidance, for coaching, for feedback, then you're a leader. And, um, and that happens literally from your first year at the firm. You have someone who's oftentimes looking to you for that. So think of yourself as a leader, number one. And secondly, as a leader, uh, focus on one thing, mm -hmm. and that is focus on making the people on your team successful. And if you spend more time worrying about making the people on your team successful than you do worrying about your own success, I think everything will go very well for you over the course of your career. So my advice is always try and build your teams, invest in your teams, and, uh, and make them believe that you care more about their success and the success of the team than you do about any individual success for yourself. Uh, because those are the leaders that I think people want to work with. They want to be part of that team. Mm -hmm. And they will push you along in your career. So you won't have to worry about your own success if you spend most of your time worrying about the success of those around you and on your team. Um, I understand that you have been a long-term uh, advocate of the uh, equality and diversity inclusion. And uh, it apparently has been one of the, the most important agenda for, for you as the corporate manager to um, promote uh, opportunities. Um, in this country, in Japan, there's a lot of uh, talks about how to uh, develop and promote uh, female leaders mm -hmm. and how to make sure that the corporations are willing to give them the right challenges and right opportunities and to integrate them in the management. Would you have some advice to uh, both uh, female aspiring leaders and also for the, for the management side? Well, it's a, <clears throat> a complex challenge, to, and that goes without saying. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think it's, it's very simple in some respects. It's mm -hmm. simple from the standpoint of why it's so important to me. And, and I don't think you need to make the business case anymore. Uh, but um, I'll just restate the business case at this point. To me, it, it is all about talent. And uh, <clears throat> if we're going to be the best firm, and I think most companies feel this way, uh, you have to have the broadest pool of talent uh, that you're looking at to draw from that you possibly can create. And then once you attract that talent, which hopefully is diverse, mm -hmm. you've got to have an environment where that diverse talent wants to continue to build their career at your organization. Right. And that takes um, uh, doing a lot of things right. There is no silver bullet. <clears throat> There's not one answer to that question. And it requires, um, I think, consistent and um, persistent emphasis. It takes right messaging from leadership in the organization. So I think I've got a responsibility in my role as chairman mm -hmm. to be talking about this all the time. And, uh, but then there's an awful lot of things we have to do right uh, to create that environment, create those opportunities, and uh, make sure that our diverse talent, whether it's gender, ethnic, or any other uh, differences that's... Well, one of the things that became clear to me when I became CEO is as much as you might like to think that <clears throat> if I get on a webcast or a conference call with my 1,800 partners and I say something, that something immediately happens as a result of that. Um, and nothing could be further from the truth. So, uh, <laughs> so <clears throat> you know, on an issue like this, and this isn't the only issue, I'll come back to that. But on the issues where I think we are really trying to drive and evolve our culture at the firm, uh, I became fairly convinced fairly, uh, fairly early that sending memos and getting on conference calls and doing webcasts, it's important. You have to do that because people need to hear from you. 
But if you just stop there, you're going to fall flat on your face. And what I really needed to do was to take that next group of, say, 150 leaders in our firm, the folks who are managing partners in local offices, lead our functional businesses, whether it's audit tax or advisory, in our local business units, and therefore the people that are touching our people uh, on a daily basis and really impacting their career development. We had to get that group of 150 people totally connected to the culture that Kathy, myself, and the rest of the leadership team at the firm was trying to drive. So about nine months ago, we brought that group of 150 leaders together. We've, um, we're doing it now on a regular basis. And what we're trying to do is say, uh, you all need to be on the exact same page that I'm on when I'm talking to our people, because there is nothing that destroys the credibility of a message more than for me to get on a call. I try and have regular calls with that next tier in our organization, about 3,000 of our senior managers and managers. Nothing destroys credibility more than if I get on a call with 3,000 managers in our organization, make a big deal about something, and they walk into the office of a partner and says, John just talked about how important it is that we all get involved in X. And the partner says, eh, you know, yeah, I, if you want to. <laughs> or something worse, right? right? Uh, so, you know, the message to that group of 150 is we, we can debate it in this room. I want to have at it. If you disagree, I want to know about it. But by the time we leave this room, I need you on the same page. And in the first meeting, we brought folks together. We had three really critical things we're trying to drive that we focused the entire meeting on. Uh, innovation and what we need to do as an organization to innovate differently, what we need to do around high performance to drive a high performance culture, and diversity was the third. So we spent about a third of our time talking about diversity. It was really this issue that you started on today, which is diversity is not just a nice thing to do because we're all good people and Kathy's really nice and she's trying to, you know, do well in her role. It was really trying to connect the dots and intellectually kind of make the case for why we're not going to grow as fast, we're not going to be as profitable, we're not going to have the best people in the profession, and we are certainly not going to have, um, ha not going to achieve all of the objectives we've laid out as a firm if we don't get inclusion right. And uh, I think it was very effective. Kathy led a lot of it. But at the end of that discussion, uh, I remember getting up in front of the group and saying, I hope you're convinced. I hope you're passionate about this. I hope you, you can catch kind of the emotional side of why this is critical. But you know what? If you don't, you still better embrace it. Because if you don't embrace it, and if you can't embody what Kathy and I are talking about in this regard, then you can't be in your leadership role. You can be successful with the firm. You can be a great partner. You can serve clients. You can do a lot of things really well in this firm. But I can't have any of that next group of 150 leaders who, when one of their managers comes into their office and says, uh, I need to leave work early tomorrow because there's a uh, women's uh, network event that I want to go to to have you say I don't know why you're wasting your time on that right and the reality is we have people that react that way in our organization sure. I'm not sitting here trying to tell you that we've got 22,000 people right. that all respond right. the right way and what I said to our that group of 150 leaders I can't get I can't flip a switch and get 22,000 people all reacting responding the right way but I have to have this group of 150 responding the right way. And not just responding when asked, but really driving a culture that's going to eventually lead to the point where we do have 22,000 people that are all on the same song sheet and reacting the same way. So uh, I hope you're passionate about it. I hope you believe it. And I hope you're convinced it's a critical business priority for us. But if you're not, you better still act like you do. Because if you don't, 
you just can't, you can't be a leader in our firm if you don't. And that was the message that Kathy and I tried to share. Do you think that there's a connection between that level of accountability um, and, I guess, empathetic care for subordinates and the way that you care for your clients and how your clients are cared for? There's a, you know, people accuse me of being a little um, uh, philosophical on some of these things sometimes, but I think there is a big connection. Uh, number one, there's a, a clear connection between uh, an employer of choice and an inclusive environment in a firm. Yes. And the engagement of your people in from a corporate social responsibility standpoint. I think that connection is very clear. And in fact, Kathy, in our firm, has responsibility for both because we believe they are inextric inextricably connected. I agree. But one of the things I've said several times in the last year or so is I've been in front of our people primarily from a CSR standpoint. So whether it's a, a recognition program that we run you know, with people that have been active in the community in one shape or form, um, one of the things I've started saying, because I believe it, is uh, our best professionals are our most engaged people in community activities. And I'm not sure which one is the cause and which one is the effect. I'm not, sh I'm not convinced personally that we have our best people just decide they also want to get involved in the community. I think people that are drawn to uh, caring about the community they're in and trying to make a personal difference in the lives of other people are the same people who, when they are um, dealing with a difficult situation with a client, can look at that uh, from an empathetic standpoint, can try and get in the head of the other person sitting across the table, and can try and work to a better solution I think it's the same type of person who, when one of the people that works for them comes in their office with a personal challenge, a professional challenge, whatever it might be, can view that in a listening, a caring, an empathetic way. And the people that can do that effectively in our firm with our people and our clients are the people that get ahead and do better at our firm. And I don't think it's just a casual relationship between the people that you see exhibiting that kind of caring and empathy, empathy for the world around them that bring those exact same skills into the professional environment and are successful for many of the same reasons. So uh, I, I do encourage our people. There are people that are just natural. That's the way they are. And they're going to be that way no matter who they're with. I think there are other people that when we encourage them to think more broadly, to get out of their own skin, to get involved in a meaningful way in the community, you can learn some skills. You can become, uh, I think, more aware of other people's perspectives. Yes. And you can learn some things that change you as a professional and as a person by virtue of that experience. Uh, so it's not just a matter of people come in and you can't change them. I think we can drive culture and mold people and mold our professionals differently if we get them involved in some things in the community as well. As far as, you know, why is diversity important? Uh, I know we've only got 30 minutes and that question alone could take 45. But, you know, I, I think to try and sum it up as best as I can, I, you know, you start with uh, it's just the right thing to do. And if you're going to be an organization which has as its hallmark integrity, you can't be um, an organization that is known wide and far and by its people for integrity if you aren't also known for doing the right thing across every dimension of the way you operate as a business, and this is certainly one of them. Having said that, that's not enough. Uh, I think in our experience, if you don't directly tie any initiative, I don't care if it's diversity or anything else that we're talking about, into the business strategies that we've articulated are critical for our future success, it's going to have uh, much less impact, much less success than it would otherwise have. So again, it's not that, um, 
It's not the right thing to do. It is, but that in and of itself won't get us to where we want to get. So the way we've tried to approach it at KPMG, we have four strategic priorities that we've been talking about with our people for the last six years. They haven't changed one bit. How we execute against them has to change as the marketplace around us evolves. But those four things have been very constant. And those four things are professionalism and integrity, quality growth, being an employer of choice, and making sure that globally we're as diverse as we can be. Yeah. And what we've tried to do in the messaging, and certainly what I've tried to do in the last couple of years in this role, is to make sure all of our people understand how does diversity fit into every one of those strategic priorities. Diversity is not something that we hang off to the side and say, all right, we're finished talking about the really important things now, um, so, but let's spend the last 10 minutes on that diversity thing as well. If we don't bake it in and make sure that our leaders, all of our partners, and hopefully our people understand, if we're going to be an employer of choice and we're going to attract and retain the best talent, why do we have to be world class in terms of an inclusive environment? If we are going to outgrow our competition, why is it critical to that objective that we are as diverse and inclusive as we can be? If we're going to be an organization which is known in the profession for being, um, from a professionalism and integrity standpoint, world class, how does diversity fit into that? And we, re we really try and bake it into each of those dimensions of the way we talk about our business with our people.